What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Barrett here today with another great hobby feature. Today I'm going to show you something that's near and dear to my heart, basically setting up your painting area, workshop, little lab, beach laboratory, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> A lot of the features on here as of late have been about you know setting up your airbrush studio, setting up your workshop, and now I'm going to show you basically how I set about to do uh, basically painting, you know, setting up, getting a, getting a paint project ready, the basic colors that I have all ready to go. If you saw my how to set up your paint workshop video last week, you know that I have a ton more paints than what I'm about to show you. But what I'm showing you is my, my staples, my go to's like my top 20, my top 30. I don't even know. There's a lot of paints there that I have used throughout the years. They're my they're my standby. So I'm going to hit them up. I'm going to grab them. They're always going to be on my palette ready to go uh, at a moment's notice, whether I'm up at the store or I'm here, you know, at the Beats Laboratory, you know, throwing it down, painting some stuff up. It's stuff that I've picked up from Kenny Boucher, you know, my good friend. Yo, dog, <laughs> my good friend Kenny over at Next Level Painting, and just you know, nugget it out through all the years. And you know, times have changed, but the colors all pretty much stay the same. So you just gotta update your uh, your color selection, and you're good to go there. But before we get into all that, I would like to invite you to uh, check. First off, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out the blog spikybitsblog.com, and also head on over to thelongwar.net. That is a, that's our basically our podcast, but there's also all sorts of other stuff you can do at thelongwar.net. So make sure to check that out as well. We also have a Kickstarter going on right now, which you can basically search. Uh, I'm sure there's links all over the place, but just type in Kickstarter, bring in hobby back and you will find that pretty easily, I'm sure. So now back to the actual tutorial itself. Like I said, it's basically like, you know, a top 20 colors, top 30 colors uh, that are always my go to when I want to hit up a project and that, you know, they're just ready to go They're They're basically, you know, some people have their bug out bag. I have my, my my painting bag ready to go. You can kind of see back there in the corner of the cabinet where I store all my paints. I basically have my little palette tray just ready to go. I pull it right out. It's got my paint and my paint colors, my go to colors, my brushes, everything like that. I got two different cups of water and I'll explain that to you also in the video. So uh, that's pretty much it from here. So let's jump right into it. I hope you enjoy my latest hobby feature. All right, so let's get right to it. These are the colors I use every day. And then this is basically my painting area, how I set up to paint and the colors that I use to paint. Now, some of these colors you you know and love, you've seen them on Next Level Painting, you've seen them here on Spiky Bits. I'm gonna break down to you what their normal everyday uses are when maybe you're not airbrushing or maybe just when you're using a brush and things like that. There's a lot of different paints in here. But then also I have, I think it's very important to have your own painting surface as well. I have the old GW paint tray kind of thing right here and I like it because I can get my, my most used brushes and I can put them right up there in the corner. And I have two different paint pots of water, one for uh, non-metallics and one for metallics. So I don't mess up my normal colors with metallics. So like if I'm rinsing my brush out and I'm doing red and I don't want any metallic paint on it. So, you know, I don't cross the stream, so to speak. So I think it's very important to always have your own little painting area and this thing's portable. You know, I pick it right up. I put it right in the, the drawer of the cabinet right next to my paint station here. And that way I can put it up. I can take it out. You know, I can leave stuff on it theoretically uh, just to get it out of the way. You know, when I'm doing an unboxing review or, you know, keep it out of the uh, the, the crossfire of the cats, so to speak. <laughs> so that is super simple. You can get all sorts of different paint trays. They're out there, you know, all different variety of prices. Games Workshop sells some sort of, um, I think it's like a box thing now. It's like a hobby hobby box, I want to say, that lets you keep all of your stuff in it and it covers up and it stores away, which I think is pretty neat. But, you know, I've had that paint tray for five years now, so I don't really need to switch. You know what I mean? And before that, I had the old uh, Citadel one that was like uh, ca cardboard or it wasn't really cardboard. It was like press board. And that thing you had to put together with glue. And that thing lasted me for 10, 10 plus years. And I actually didn't really outgrow it. Um, there wasn't anything wrong with it. It was just... It was too big at the time that paint tray came out. I was like, man, this is much smaller. I can I can slim down to this sort of thing. So these are the colors right here that I use 
every day when I'm doing paint projects. Now, first off, you know, you gotta have your pot of brushes. And I have all sorts of different brushes you can tell in here. These are my backup brushes, because you saw the, my go-to brushes that were on my actual paint tray itself. And look, let's, let's go over that, because it's very important to have uh, good brushes to use. So first off, let's see what we got here. So we've got this kind of like detail type brush. This is a Reaper Pro. And let's zoom in on that for you, just so you can kind of see what's going on. So this is a Reaper Pro kind of brush. It's, um, I guess it's similar to G-Dub's Detail Brush. I don't really use it for anything but like base coating, I guess. So right there is kind of uh, how fine of a point it gets. And then right here, it looks like I left some paint on this brush. This is a Reaper Pro also, but this, this is more of your detail brush from Games Workshop. When you make a point, you can kind of see right there what, is, what you're getting into. Um, and then I got a smaller one, which is a Reaper Pro paintbrush. And I think this was part of like a $15 set. And what I like doing with this is getting in the cracks and crevices with washes and things. And I, I just kind of get in there and use the wash on certain areas. And that works out pretty good for me. And then we've got a couple of different dry brushes, wash brushes, whatever I need them for, the chisel brush, and just a generic dry brush. Then a small detail brush, a liner, kind of this is a 6 aught liner brush mostly used for edging and things like that it's obviously starting to split a little bit probably need to replace that and then a bigger dry brush and this is just a bigger wash brush slash base coat brush this is a four number four low low cornell brush not exactly a well-known name but they've served me well in the past so i love using them and then of course in this bin I've got new brushes, old brushes, any any sort of thing, you know, I still got some liner brushes and you know just a kind of random assortment of, of stuff I can use. I even got a little scalpel right there, some micron pens, I think there's all sorts of little doodads in here as well in the bottom. So you don't need to get anything fancy, you just get you a pen cup and boom, there you go. So next up is my bottle cap collection. You're like bottle caps with what with, with the crap. Well, bottle caps actually, um, I drink a lot of water because, well, I drink a lot of other stuff that requires me to drink water. And, <laughs> and what's nice about these is it makes a nice little palette. You know, the little cup right there, you just pour your paint in it, you're good to go. So if you save a bunch of these, you don't really have to worry too much about cleaning them out because you always have a bunch. And you can just kind of kind of throw them out from there. And then we've got the brush cleaner. This is uh, the Masters brush cleaner. It's really good stuff. I think you've seen me use it in a couple of tutorials. It's great to, to apply to your brushes at the end of every use. You just kind of uh, lather it up. It's literally like soap. Lather it up and you just kind of scrape it that surface against uh, all the, the crud, the hardened surface in there. And it gets a lot of the paint off your bristles and also gives it, kind of conditions the bristles as well. And then a little bit of uh, pluck foam right here because you never know when you need to do a little bit of sponge work for some highlights and things like that. Then I've got a nice little color series here, a little color triad so to speak. Let's put, the, let's put those out here and talk about that for a sec. So these are my red, this is my red stripe package I like to roll in uh, along with the Troll Slayer Orange which you've probably also heard from Kenny, some of Kenny's videos. So first up you've got Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Mephiston Red, and then Troll Slayer Orange. And what that does is if you start right here and go up to here. You don't always have to do this, but depending on how big your surface is, this is a good um, kind of run of paint to highlight up red. And a lot of times when you're working with things, you can't always uh, airbrush everything. Like for instance, you've got this uh, this little Grey Knight Purifier guy right here. You can see I was obviously able to airbrush the shoulder pad, but unfortunately I was not able to airbrush the stock of the barrel right there. So what I had to do was go in with my Mephiston Red um, first and give it a wash and then I went in with some Evil Sun Scarlet over top and I hit the edges maybe with a Wild Rider. I forget how high I exactly went up, but I wanted to keep it right about the same kind of color level, um, you know, as far as highlights and contrast as the shoulder pad. So I kind of stopped right where I was right there. And that was a great strike package to roll in for red. Conversely, I have these guys right here. These are my Americrons, Americron. And this is my little Cryptek conversion. But obviously I wasn't able to airbrush red on this either. So I had to go through and I had to line it. I started with the Mephiston and I worked it up a little bit higher. Um, might have stopped at Wild Rider, I forget exactly. But you can kind of tell that it's it's obviously brighter than that Grey Knight model and I did that to basically contrast off with the blues 
and I think it, I think it worked out pretty good. It doesn't. It's hard to do red and blue together. A lot of times they clash, but I think I think it worked out well. So those are the big. These are your big reds that I, that I like to use out of the pot, so to speak. Um, and speaking also, another little trick for red is this bottle of wash I have here somewhere. <laughs> oh, here it is. So Secret Weapon Minis has this great stuff. It's called Soft Body Black. And Soft Body Black is amazing to put over everything but just about metals, I feel like. So what I do is I water it down a little bit with a mix. And you've probably seen me do this, uh, the mix of, it's like three-fourths water, one part future floor wax. And what that does is it gives it a little bit, as you can kind of see the glow on the model itself because it, it is wax, you know, on the red there. But what it does is it gives you re this really nice kind of contrast on your reds, your browns, your oranges, even, you know, even going on up. I don't know if I'd do it over yellow, but I definitely would stop right there. So, red, uh, soft body black gives you a great contrast over most reds, I feel like. So there's that, and that's one of the washes I keep in here. Another wash I keep in here that I really like to use is something I call Purity Tech. And Purity Tech is, well there it is, one part devil and mud, one part black, and three parts sepia with a little splash of that future floor wax mix that I like to use to break up the tension. And here, here's the future floor wax uh, recipe right here, 75% water, 25% tech, and it just kind of lives in this bottle. You can see it is shiny, it does build up all over the bottle. I've literally had this bottle for 15 years or so. <laughs> and what's cool about the purity seal tech, and this was something I picked up off of Kenny, uh, for doing the purity seals, like on stuff like the Grey Knight guy, for instance, you can see on where the purity seals are, that is basically, I just used a bone, a basic bone color, and then I waited for it to dry, and then I just hit it with that purity seal tech, right? Let that dry, and it got in all the cracks, and it gave it a nice, nice solid uh, highlight, you can kind of see, right? And in the, in the cracks and crevices, and then I would come back, maybe with the same bone, and just hit the raised edges just a little bit, or with a micron pen, and actually write something into there, like up top. So that stuff works really good, and you can use Purity Tech on things like bone, like teeth, you know, coops, claws, all that stuff. It's great. And to go along with your Purity Tech, I use Skeleton Bone from Army Painter. It's not quite as, it, it's not an airbrush paint, and it's not a G-Dub paint, but what I do like about the Army Painter stuff is that it's a solid, uh, fluid color that really goes well over most, um, just most surfaces like it's you can tell I hope that came through on the microphone I, I shook it pretty hard uh, you can tell it's a little bit more watery than most stuff and that's to get a nice solid coverage over the surface and of course I also used the matte black from Army Painter and there's a couple other choice colors too that I love from Army Painter like oak brown is like my go-to for leathers and actually believe it or not all those desert bases you see on most of my models starting you know with the iron warriors because this is actually an old mix of i believe it was dark flesh and bestial brown but it turns out that oak brown is exactly those two colors mixed together from back in the day so it was perfect for all of my bases that i used out back in the day with that um that mix and i just basically could keep on using that color to paint the bases, which is great. And I just do a, light, a nice little dry brush of, uh, I believe it's bubonic brown over top to give it that nice uh, desert, deserty kind of color. Another one of my faves from Army Painter is uh, Barbarian Flesh, same premise. You just hit the flesh areas, you hit it with a flesh wash, which is right here, which is another go-to of mine that I formulated personally. So it's an Agrax Earth Shade, a uh, Gnome Oil, and a hint of some sort of flesh wash, whatever the flesh wash was. I think it was auger and flesh back in the day. I still have a few pots of it, so I'm still kind of retro. And I mix that up. It's all equal parts. Mix it up with a little bit of the well, future floor wax tech. And that is my wash for the same, same premise. With the purity tech, I basically um, do a base coat and then wash it right over the top. So these are the majority of my go-tos. Now I got some other solid colors in here. Sometimes I like to, you know, use a scorn red because it's a, it's a nice solid red that works well over a lot of good surfaces. Uh, another, some other great colors in here that I really like to use. 
is oh and then there's another army painter paint uh, it's a silver that goes obviously the same deal for doing steels and things like that and then hitting it with that purity tech because purity tech actually works well over that color as well and then we've got some weathering stuff which I personally love so first off you got the nilla oxides and nilla oxide and razor rust is really good to use along with everybody's favorite typhus corrosion on uh, basically when you're doing the um, like weathering and things like on treads on buildings I've got this great um, little what is it bunker right here that um, Kenny helped me paint it's basically just uh, spray you know spray base coated dry brushed up and then just a whole lot of um, you know basically the corrosion in the cracks and things like that did, did some metal laid some metals down hit it with the nilla oxide right there you can see where the rizza rust <laughs> is applied over top of all of the corrosion and then I did that same recipe for the dirt that we just talked about with the uh, oak brown and it turned out pretty well I mean this is a nice little bunker that you can kind of use you know for whatever it's uh, it's really good stuff so that's your basically your weathering strike package and if you want to get crazy with the cheese whiz you can always use the harvest brown and the orange brown that we talk so much about you know me and Kenny because that stuff's great for doing like treads and tracks like if you want to you want to hit up your the bottom of your vehicles you know you just sponge on well first you do a nice solid airbrush coat of like that harvest brown then you can get crazy you can sponge you can go with the orange brown and then you can cut it back down with some uh, basically some direct uh, highlights like right here this is harvest brown and then I sponged on and then I hit it with like a darker color and then I sponged some harvest back on but then if you really want to get crazy and get super super dark you can do stuff like this which is that orange brown first and then sponged on with some harvest brown in the cracks and crevices and even some black and even some some metals up around in those leg areas right and that gets you this really crazy looking kind of uh, completely rusted out and you can see it a little bit better on the claw right there where, you, where I combined in some metals and some blacks kind of like some burnout blacks so that's really cool so you can use a lot of these things together these colors together and of course having it on your paint bench is really good too because you know you can sponge it on uh, at the last second to do a bunch of different effects and then I have another metal too that I really like plate metal mail from the same line uh, of army painter because it is a little bit more fluid and dynamic to work with then I got some skull white uh, from miniature this is a very old bottle but it's, uh, it's still hung in there with me so I really like that stuff and conversely I have some matte white as well from army painter because another one of my solid go-to's and if depending on the project um, you know sometimes I don't use that harvest brown sometimes I use this cadmium back black brown for um, combination with like using some burnt umbers and things to sponge on and that just really depends on the product uh, the project like with reds and uh, sometimes I definitely stick to that with uh, when I'm going over top of reds because it's really hard to make umber work um, specifically with them and then I got some washes some blue washes and some blue highlight stuff and what this is a lot of times is for you know when you're doing that uh, that crazy kind of OSL kind of thing like on the Necron guy here you know when I hit it up with the with the OSL and then you can kind of see where I go back and I hit it with the the edge with the the very bright blue and I go in there with a uh, just like a drop of white and then I hit it with that glaze uh, you know this water this super watered down glaze to kind of bring it all together and sometimes remember with glazes it's very important to do uh, smaller thinner coats instead of one big coat and last but not least is my favorites the greens and Kenny put me onto these of course they're super good so you got the the venerable necrite green and that couples with what is it ionin green and basically you work it up from there and then you work in a little flash gets yellow uh, from G-Dub or the new game color uh, line I think it's golden yellow 
maybe it's Bad Moon Yellow. Yeah, I think it's Bad Moon Yellow from Vallejo Game Air, not to be confused with um, the model air, the game air, and that's all in another tub because I bought the set of that. And then I'll usually wash that down with some um, some fallout that I kind of thin down with that that wash right there. And what you're gonna be like, well, what's that look like? Well, let me show you. So that gets you. You're probably seeing that Heldrake that Kenny did. That's the same color pattern, but it gets you stuff like this. Like here's my mammon. And you can definitely see where it gets super bright in some spots all the way up. Like all of those details right there were highlighted with the brush. And then I hit it with a glaze um, to basically, you know, kind of bring it bring it back down and keep it tight. So the, the, the darker areas that I was in and then I use some blacks. Actually on that, I'm not sure I went full black. I probably went like some dark green or just some black with the green in the cracks there and the crevices and kind of worked my way up and out. And then right there on the bone is actually just the bone uh, painted on and then I used Harvest Brown and then I hit it with some black towards the tip because it seems like Chaos Bone is always super crazy. It goes from light to dark instead of dark from light like conventional normal browns that we're used to. So there's a few other colors in there but nothing that's like a super go-to, it's just kind of like a remnant. Uh, I just don't even know why it's in here to be honest. <laughs> so it's nothing I'm going to bother you your time with. Just some leftovers uh, from some different products. Oh, I do want to show you this steel kind of recipe. So another good thing, like a lot of people have a hard time airbrushing steel with Vallejo. And what I found through Kenny is this great recipe. It's black and steel from Reaper, uh, Reaper Miniature Paints. So it's black and steel. That's number 09205. And then you can use this uh, this really good tarnished steel is another good option. And then you can finish up with true silver. And what that does is those colors right there, they give you this really solid looking metal, but it's not a metal. And I'll show you, like, you can use that for a couple different things, like some Iron Warriors tanks, or you can use it for you know some granite stuff now with the granite stuff here you can see that they basically have the same base darken steel color but then this was mixed in with some blues right here and then this I just basically used some darker blacks and took it up a little bit higher and the highlights all the way up to the third tier so this uses the blue more for the highlights and this uses the the steels more for the highlights you know coming all the way up and what that does is it's not a true gray it's a it's an actual metal color on the vehicle itself that you know really shines through very well I feel like you know you can kind of see you can see where the metals are like the trim is an actual metal color with a wash but the rest of the tank is all airbrushed which came out pretty well I feel like you know with minimum fuss or muss um, in that regard because it is the Reapers and they are, they are designed to be airbrushed with the Awada Eclipse that me and Kenny frequently use in favor um, it, it really pushes that acrylic paint through and comes home true now Kenny's been having great success with something called the Vallejo Flow Improver from Vallejo it comes in a, a much larger bottle I haven't got any of it yet but he says that's really helping push the Vallejo metals through through the airbrush now I haven't haven't done a lot, whole lot of painting recently so I cannot attest to that but if Kenny says it's true it's probably true <laughs> nine times out of ten if Kenny says it's true it's true and let's see one other thing I wanted to show you was this little bone detail here so something I was kind of talking about with the bone, I didn't really show you, but on this Iron Warrior guy right here, I just used that bone paint and it hit it with a couple of lines of that oak brown and then gave it a nice wash uh, with that purity tech right over top of those, those bone features right there. So that is another good way to get bone done uh, super quick. Now you can see my, my OG Iron Warriors. Always got to magnetize everything. You'd be surprised. I should do a army feature on my Iron Warriors because like almost everything is magnetized. It's just, it's straight silly. People are like, wait, what? All these guys are magnetized? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's super crazy. I love it. 
So that's about it for this one. That's basically how to set up your paint tray and some, some really good go-to colors, you know, outside of the normal palette or the normal things that you might think of because that's kind of like an all-inclusive. You, you always need your whites. You always need your darks. Your bones, your steels, your browns, your reds are, are, are basics. But then, you know, having those highlights and kind of seeing how to put them all together, even though this isn't quite a tutorial, but, you know, you kind of get the idea of, of the possibilities and what you can do there. So I know this is a long one, guys. I just really wanted to show you uh, all of these kind of features together in, in one video, and I didn't want to split it up. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Finally, the Long War Kickstarter is here. We are trying to raise money to improve all elements of our videos. Cameras, microphones, lighting, and even editing software. We're more than just a company dedicated to bringing hobby back. We're a community. Whether you enjoy all of our content for free here on YouTube or you're a member of the fast growing Hall of Veterans and you enjoy early exclusive access, we're part of the same community. It's not all business though. All the long war swag that you guys have been waiting for is available on the Kickstarter. Please stop by, check out our Kickstarter and thank you for the support.